time was going by so fast. So many competitions, so many different cities. We lived everywhere and nowhere, it seems. Then suddenly everyone began talking about Canada and the Winter Olympics. Fall, 1987. Time for all of the Soviet Union's elite athletes to dedicate themselves to a single goal. For Katya and Sergei, it would be the greatest challenge yet, the 1988 Winter Olympics in Calgary. Only a gold medal would do. The Soviet team has moved outside of Moscow to an exclusive training center. Practices are long and hard. Downtime is spent in activity rooms and dormitories. Here, away from prying eyes, Katya and Sergei finally have a chance to open up to each other. We had those quiet evenings when we can talk and uh, not about skating, of course, <laughs> and uh, uh, just laugh. And um, so I was, that, that evenings were very dear for me and I was thinking that. I was uh, all, also felt very proud that I can uh, um, do something nice for Sergei. Just when things seem to be going so well, unexpected calamity strikes. In practice one afternoon, Sergei hits a patch of soft ice. Katya takes a hard fall, is hospitalized, and suddenly the entire Olympic season is in jeopardy. I was very upset the way it's happened, and I start to blame Sergei because I, th I thought that we're going to miss the whole year, we're going to miss the National European Olympics, and just because the stupid eyes, and I thought that he wasn't careful. And then Sergei came uh, with a bunch of flowers, and that was the first time when I saw him so disappointed and nervous and uh, he didn't smile. He always smiled and so loose. And here he came with the flowers, and he is very upset. And first thing he say is sorry. I never knew a young man could be so tormented. In the hospital corridor, he was blaming himself. He thought it was all his fault. I remember very well that Sergey just kept sitting in the hallway and waiting for me. That was so amazing for me to see him you know, with such feelings. He wanted to express his feeling, I think, to me somehow, and the only way it would be possible was on the eyes. I was feeling this after I come back from the hospital, and after we start to skate, I was feeling that I have a man next to me was holding me. He was holding me so tight now, like I thought that he has never, never got, gonna let me go, you know. I felt so great and I felt that um, something changed in him in our skating, but I can definitely feel that uh, he feel very much strongly and more serious about skating and about taking care of me. Christmas time in Russia, a family holiday. For the first time since they began skating together, Katya invites Sergei to spend it with her family. Celebrated on New Year's Eve, there is a decorated tree, candles, songs, and presents. Katya gives Sergei a needlepoint she's been working on all year, a sad clown sitting on a park bench. Immediately after Christmas, they are off to Prague, Czechoslovakia for the 1988 European Championships. The last stop before the Olympics. They skate unevenly, out of sync, but even a less than perfect Gordieva and Grinkov is enough Gordieva and Grinkov to win. On the way to Calgary, Sergei reassures Katya, don't worry, we'll be ready. I just remember that he was holding my hand during the flight and this brought me some nice feelings about that I don't have to worry right now, I don't have to be already nervous about the skating or anything. And 
everything will be fine and this is the way I always felt about Sergey and as I said that especially when he hold my hand off the ice it's mean that something very something very special something very nice I was feeling that he's mine he's mine and no one can hold my hand right now except Sergey